the Hamilton Tiger Cats in the CFL uh, taking on the Montreal Alouettes and Johnny Manziel making his CFL debut. He threw none other than just four picks, four of them. And they showed a shot of the defensive coordinator. I'm like, holy crap, is that Jerry Glanville? And sure enough, it was. And now, sure enough, it is right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Former coach of the Oilers and Falcons, a guy who I haven't spoken to in forever and a day, now at the Hamilton Tiger Cats, Jerry Glanville here on the show. How are you, Jerry? Well, wow, your, uh, your introduction and your promo, you're spending way too much money on uh, just delivering the show. You need to get better guests. Well, come on now, Jerry. I mean, we're showing it. We're showing a shot of you right now on the on the television screen, straight from the Hamilton Tiger Cats media guide of you wearing sunglasses. It's fantastic. What a shock, huh? Come on now, Jerry. This is great. So, how how did you wind up with the Hamilton Tiger Cats coordinating the defense? Well, June Jones, of course, was my assistant in in the NFL, and mm-hmm. then I was June Jones' assistant at uh, Hawaii when we had those great teams in Hawaii. And then uh, he became the head coach up here and uh, called me and said, let's go do it one more time. Nobody, he said, the defense will play better than anybody. Come on up. So uh, we're up here trying to trying to win a game or two. Well, you won a game certainly last uh, Friday night, Jerry. Uh, what were your impressions of uh, Manziel out there? He had no chance because, uh, you know, we, we were able to, you know, my whole life is kind of funny. The game was over. I got a text from uh, Bernie Kozar. And Bernie Kozar, we got a text from Joe Theismann. And they said, collapse the pocket, bring one in the face, and play tight man. I think I've seen it before. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, you know, we collapsed the pocket, swooped a guy outside to his face, and and played uh, not one snap of zone. So all of a sudden, uh, quarterbacks have bad days as you know no of course absolutely and it was his first uh opportunity up there uh in canada do you see somebody in there uh that was out there on that field that uh has the ability to excel at this sport do you think jerry at this level well what what i did i went back and watched all the games he played at a&m we had a long train ride we had a five-hour train ride uh to to uh to the game site so as i was riding the train they one of my guys put it on a computer, and I watched everything that he did at A&M. And then that night, we made about three little wrinkles, which uh, would negate any success that he had at A&M. What is a shock to me is that what we did, no SEC coordinator ever put on him. Uh, what we ran, nobody ever ran at him. And, and you just wonder, the SEC coordinators are highly paid but they must be highly overpaid because uh, uh, our, our deal we put together riding on a train. Uh, you think somebody else would have run that out? That's the first time he saw that package. Are you serious? No, nobody yes. attempted in the SEC what you did in the CFL on Friday night? No, not one guy. We, we looked at all the film. And I said, well, he's having success because he th- this is not happening, and he's playing zone. He's, play- he's throwing to number three slant in a zone. And he's making the zone guy come up with the play fake. Well, you know, we, you know, welcome to pro football. This ain't bula bula. <laughs> Jerry Glanville joining us here on the Rich Eisen Show. So I guess last question on this for you is, do you think he has what it takes? Do you think he has the skill set to succeed, uh, certainly when he's seeing stuff for the first time? Uh, I think, you know what you never do, and, and this is my rule with, with, with June, but he worked for me and it's been my rule forever. You never, ever give up on deep ball accuracy. And in our practices when he was with us, he has deep ball accuracy. And if you can throw a 55-yarder on the, and where it's supposed to be, uh, you know, then you do other things to help him, uh, better protection, uh, uh, better receivers, but he's got deep ball accuracy, so I'd never give up on him. Jerry Glanville joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Why are you riding the the, the train, man? I mean, I, and I know that that's what's going on in the CFL, but I mean, why are you? Why I know, and June Jones called up and asked you, why are you doing this, Jerry? Uh, I love ball. You know, if you don't love ball, you don't do this. But uh, uh, you know, I look. You know, we we put together defense. I got three, four real good assistants and. You'll love this. We we gave up one touchdown in 11 quarters. That's never happened up here. We've gone into four games at halftime where we've given up 25 yards passing. Just the 
just to excel, just to be better than uh, what everybody thinks you're going to be, that, that's the challenge. But you want to coach in the NFL again? Yeah, but again, you know, who's going to hire me? You know, it's kind of funny. People say, go get an NFL job. Everybody that would recommend me and love me as a coach is dead. So it's, it's hard to call up your people, you know. So you don't think, um, you know, so that there would be people that knew anybody who had uh, worked with you want to hire you, Jerry? Well, you never know. I mean, if, you, if we play good, I mean, if, if I, I heard from five NFL teams after that game, same game you saw, yeah, because I think they were shocked what they uh, what they saw and they realized they'd seen that before a few years back. And, uh, you know, who, who knows? Who knows? Uh, but the bottom line is I enjoy every day. You know, we work 17 hours a day, Man. seven days a week, and can't wait to jump out of bed and go for another one. I got gotcha. you. Uh, so uh, who was the best player you ever coached, Jerry, as a head coach in the NFL? Well, yeah, I, it's, it's not a fair question. I tell people this because I've got seven, nine guys in the Hall of Fame. But, but you know what? Uh, Claude Humphrey thanked me for going to the Hall of Fame. Deion Sanders, they said, they're going to Hall of Fame with or without me. They're going to Hall of Fame if your grandma's coaching them. <laughs> so w- when you say who's the w- – what I remember is guys that weren't good enough when you started and two years later wins you a ball game because of uh, effort, coaching, uh, dedication in the off season, and now they're good enough. That's the guys you remember. I mean, uh, uh, I-, I love coaching Deion Sanders and Lynn Barney. They're the two best corners in the Hall of Fame. But they were going there whether I coached them or not. So what what was what's your favorite story about Dion? What knew how special he was, Jerry? Well, people it was so you know I was coaching him in the at press conference. You know, people in the press and the guy in the press conference said, "You got to hate Dion Sanders." And I says, "I do." He goes, "Yeah, he dances after every time he scores. He dances in the end zone." And I said, let me tell you something. I hope he dances three times a game. <laughs> and, you know, that stuff don't bother me. This is, you know, people think you get upset over stuff like that. And what people don't know about Dion, in practice, you got to be the show team. We, we get 15 plays of our work. Now, let's say you play Minnesota. Mm-hmm. And you, so now you get, he's the Minnesota corner. Even when he was a show team in practice, he did not allow anybody to catch a ball on him. Even when we were supposed to be the enemy, he never let anybody catch a ball on him in practice. That's why he's in Hall of Fame. Have you ever spo- have you spoken to Favre lately, recently? Because obviously he's a different person than the one that you coached, Jerry. Uh, I've I spoke to him since he's since he's uh, you know got out of football, but I haven't talked to him in two three years. What was he like? When you had him, Jerry, he, he was a, a young stallion that uh, hadn't been broken yet. Uh, nobody had rode him, and uh, you know you, you're that age and you got that kind of money. And I think the problem with all young kids, I think this is part of the problem with Johnny Manziel, and you're not playing, it's easy to drift into trouble. If you're playing and have the responsibility that your team's counting on you. You pay more attention and you do less things. That, uh, I think both guys were uh, – their problems were magnified because they were sitting the bench. A couple more minutes left with Jerry Glanville, Hamilton Tiger Cats defensive coordinator currently and longtime NFL uh, coach, head coach here on the show. Uh, are, are you still leaving tickets for Elvis, Jerry? No, I just I, – I bring them with me. What do you mean you bring him with you? you, you... He, he, he's at practice with me, and I take him to the games. Uh, he, he's got his own his own pass. So when was the last time that you left a ticket for Elvis? <laughs> oh, man, I guess we were playing New England in Memphis in a preseason game, and uh, Raymond Berry was their head coach. Uh-huh. And uh, the halftime was dedicated to him at Memphis, and, and June said, well, if we dedicated the halftime to him, we might as well leave him a ticket. And that thing sort of took a life of its own after that. <laughs> it's so, how many tickets in your career did you leave aggregate one ga- for Elvis? One game, Perfect. and how about this? I, yeah. went, I walked into the Falcons, yeah. and on the left, they have a hall of whatever they call it, hall of fame, whatever they call it, the Falcons. And there's a Jerry Glanville section. I go over to the Jerry Glanville section to read it. 
in the Hall of Fame section in the Atlanta Falcon building says, and Jerry Glanville left two tickets for Elvis for every game. I never did it one time. Are you, you serious? Think, yeah, you would think where I worked would get it right. But the Internet, the Internet says different. And if it's on the Internet, it's the truth. It's like CNN, fake news every day. So you, ne- <laughs> <laughs> so you never left a ticket for Elvis Presley? Except that- yes. Okay. Yes. Wow. Memphis. That's it. That one time, then. One time. That one time. All right, last one for you then, Jerry. Uh, one of my favorite uh, uh, Wired moments in the history of NFL films is you telling uh, somebody that the NFL stood for not for long. Do you, do you have a CFL, what CFL stands for? No, but I better get one because the officiating hasn't changed. <laughs> <laughs> I better find one. I didn't know where that one came. That's the first time, by the way, I ever said that in my life. I was, I was so mad. And what caused it the week before... We were playing the Broncos, and Elway went off on a scramble, and Johnny Meads was my star outside linebacker, and he didn't want to hit the quarterback. He thought, and the quarterback would straight in on him, blew his knee, sent him to surgery. So the next game, we're in Tampa, and I told all the linebackers, the quarterback goes out on a scramble, protect yourself, hit him, don't let him hit you. And we bumped the quarterback, and that's when the guy threw the flag. And, I asked if he was a Bula Bula official. Uh, the last game he did before he did that program was a Vanderbilt homecoming, which, of course, they play at six a year. So, so uh, th- that's the kind of people you deal with. Not for he long. He ran a pet store. He, he ran a pet store <laughs> Monday through Thursday. <laughs> and then he threw flags on you on Sunday. That's yeah. What you're oh, my gosh. Jerry, I, I got to catch up with you more often. Thanks for calling in. Really appreciate Thank- it. All right, thanks for caring, brother. Adios. You got it. It's Jerry Glanville calling in. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.